everybody. Welcome to DB Overland and welcome to the ultimate overlanding teardrop camper conversion. On this video, we're doing suspension. <laughs> yes, I'm so excited for this to show you guys what I've got up here and it's going to be amazing. I don't think anybody on the market right now is doing a suspension setup like this on a teardrop camper. So I'm pretty excited for this out of the box system, but it's actually quite a simple system. So come join me and let's put this kick butt suspension system on this teardrop camper. Okay, so let's talk about what type of suspension I'm going to be doing on the teardrop camper. I know I've mentioned, you know, a unique suspension, a unique suspension, it's different. So I think it's finally time to share with you guys what I've got, you know, up here. <laughs> so the type of suspension that I am going to do is an air ride suspension and you probably have seen some evidence of that but we're gonna go bags and the brand of bag that I picked for this build there it's called uh, Vixen if I'm not mistaken and uh, I really like the quality of their bags and another feature that I really like on their bags is that they've got a built-in rubber bump stop internally so that makes it very nice because then I don't have to worry about trying to fabricate an additional bump stop for the suspension another thing is to keep everything controlled uh, I am running the uh, Fox 2.0 performer series uh, shocks I really like these um, they do a really, really good job at uh, controlling the trailers uh, in the past when I've used them. And then also another nice thing about these is this is a Mopar replacement. Only difference is, is they put the Mopar sticker on them. So it's kind of nice because whatever shock I use, you can go down to your uh, Mopar dealership and you can get a replacement if for some reason you've damaged one out on the trail. And another very unique uh, thing to this suspension system is I'm trying to keep the width of the axle as short as possible. And I was thinking of running an external shock, uh, you know, an external shock on the outside of the body in between the tire but then I would just push it out farther and farther and farther and I really don't want to do that. So what I have come up with is I'm going to do a cantilever system for the shocks. So I'm going to have a pivot point that's going to transfer a vertical motion into a horizontal motion. And so the shocks are going to be mounted horizontally underneath the body along the side of the frame and that pivot point will allow transfer vertically to horizontally and I'm looking really forward to that I I know that uh, the cantilever system is it's not new uh, there is a lot of vehicles that uh, people or you know people use them on vehicles in uh, you know situations where you don't have a lot of vertical travel or a vertical space, but you've got a lot more uh, horizontal room. But I have not seen this on a trailer at all. I mean, prove me wrong. If you guys know that a trailer exists having that suspension system, please share it in the you know comment uh, down below. I'd love to see it. But I think I'm gonna be the very first person to have an airbag suspension with a cantilever shock setup on a teardrop camper. 
and I think on a trailer. Not the airbags, but the cantilever shock system. So I'm really excited about this and uh, let's just dive right into it. Um, I need to, I think, focus first on the control arms that are gonna hold the axle in place. So let's just dive into that and I will tell you guys my idea behind those control arms as we go. First thing that I decided to take care of was going to be the frame mounts for the control arms. Now I fabricated these mounts out of three and a half by three and a half square tubing with a quarter inch wall thickness. And this was going to be perfect for the bushings that I have for the pivot point on the control arm. For the control arms, I decided to go with a 2x3 rectangular tubing that was 3 16 wall. And I thought this was going to be a pretty good uh, material size to use because it'll give me nice good strength and then also it will give me the material width that I need when I make the mounts to go around the axle. Once I got the pivot point laid out, I drilled two small pilot holes to help keep the hole saw nice and straight as I cut through the material. Okay, so after sitting here trying to figure out what way I'm going to run the suspension, I think I've got it figured out. And this is what I came up with. So, instead of running the control arm above the axle, I'm gonna run it below the axle. And yes, I know ground clearance and all that stuff, but what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm actually gonna radius this. I'm gonna cut this out and put a, um, <laughs> cut it out and give it some clearance. And um, I'm gonna do half of the width of this. And this is three inches, so I'll come in half an inch, inch and a half, sorry. And cope a notch out in that so then that way this can sit up a little bit farther up around the axle tube. And then I've decided that I think running airbags inside the frame is going to work out the best because these airbags collapse down to three inches. And so my biggest concern with this right now is John needs to get this in his garage so it has to fit in a seven foot tall garage door. And so I could go easy by putting airbags right here, but then it wouldn't collapse down as far because by the time you make the mount to come up so you can get the hardware in, you're gonna be at least an inch, inch and a half right there. And then you're not going to you're not going to be able to drop this down far enough to be able to get it through a seven foot garage door. So I'm gonna make some cross members that'll tie into both sides of the frame. 
That'll give me my upper mount for the airbag. I'll make a new mount right here. And for this length right here of uh, the potential of it getting overstressed, I'm gonna cap this with a piece of um, square tubing, like quarter inch wall square tubing. And I'll run this, I'll run it across here into the bag mount and that'll stiffen this up even more. And still with maybe being an inch, inch and a half tall, that'll still allow me to get this really close to here. And then that way everything will clear in his garage door. Because that's the beauty about these teardrop campers is you could store them in your garage. And it makes it really nice for packing up and um, getting ready for trips and stuff like that. So I do not want to take that away from him. And actually, if I, you know, told him, hey, John, your camper is no longer going to be fitting in the garage, I think he would be quite upset. <laughs> so I think this is going to work out quite well. It was a bit of a pain in the butt just going through all the processes of up control our arm on top control arm down below airbags you know underneath the frame the side of the frame all that fun stuff and this will now also give me plenty of room to mount the shock is going to be mounted right here going over to the pivot point for the cantilever system so we still got to have all that room to be able to connect, you know, that linkage from the axle up to the cantilever arm for the shock. So I think this is going to work out the best. Now, uh, I think what I need to do is I need to get the axle squared up in location. So, and then um, that way I can mark on the control arms where I need to make the notch. And then I can start uh, figuring out where all the mounts are gonna be for everything. So that is my next step is to get everything in location and then start marking it out and start cutting and hacking <laughs> and making some brackets. This is gonna be awesome. Once I got the axle into the location where I wanted it, I made sure that it was perfectly square and perfectly centered in the frame. After I got the axle lined up perfectly, I referenced from the pivot point of the control arm down to the center of the axle and that is where I will be making the notch in the control arm to give it some extra clearance around the axle tubing. For connecting the control arm to the axle, I will be having two points of contact. Now, the two points of contact will prevent the axle from twisting when applying the brakes. I'm also going to be using the polyurethane bushings for the points of contact to allow a little bit of flex and movement between the right and left side. With the control arms finished, now it was time for me to come up with a bracket to be able to bolt the control arm to the axle. This can be challenging sometimes, just trying to figure out, make sure that everything's gonna clear and work out exactly how you have it envisioned, but we'll see. I think I've got it figured out though. This is what I came up with. Boom. <laughs> so that will go 
just like that. Heck yeah. Now, the reason why I did this is because my plan is, here, let me do this for you guys. Oh, come on. All right. So, that's my axle tube. And I'm planning on putting a gusset on the top of the axle tube that it's going to be a piece of two and a half by two, two and a half quarter inch wall square tubing. And what I'll do is I'll rip it in half. So I'll have two and a quarter up top or inch and a quarter and inch and a quarter and so it'll be two and a half wide by inch and a quarter tall and this bracket I can tie this upper part of it into the gusset that'll be welded on top of the axle tube itself cool well let's get this transferred over onto some steel and then let's just start cutting away. <laughs> I chose quarter inch thick plate to make the brackets out of because I wanted these brackets to be very strong. These brackets are gonna take the weight of the camper and we'll be transferring it into the suspension components and we do not need these brackets to be failing on us. Well, making some very good progress. The bag mounts are in. Let me show you guys. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Can you guys see? Awesome. So we've got our cross member in that holds the two bags. And then I've got a nice mounting plate up top which there will be plenty of room for accessing the air, uh, the air fitting and the hardware for the bag and everything. And then I've got the lower bag mounts in. Nice, isn't it? Oh, that turned out so good. Cool. So I'll show you guys real quick here. Oh, let me put that like right there. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. So also I went ahead and started making the mounts for the pan hard bar. And this guy's gonna be the lower mount. And this guy's gonna be the frame mount side. So it'll be like that. Of course I gotta cut it. So that's the frame side. 
And this is the axle side. Nice. So, my plan is to, ha to mount this guy right like this. Because I think that'll be good clearance, out of the way, won't interfere with anything. So, I think that is going to be absolutely perfect. So, now I'm... I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get um, the Panhard bar stuff all tacked in and I'll get the bar made uh, or cut the tube to length and then that is pretty much everything on like the suspension components like the control arms and axle and all that stuff and then I can start on the shocks and the cantilever system so oh that's going to be that's going to be awesome so yeah i'll go ahead and finish getting everything tacked in and then we'll pull it all apart and then i'll just start burning a whole bunch of wire and get this all welded in 100 percent if you're new to seeing a suspension like this where you have airbags or coil springs a panhard bar is actually quite important what it's designed to do is keep your axle in location. Without this bar, your axle can move left to right and that will cause a lot of major issues and it will actually be very unstable and unsafe to drive. When building a pan hard bar, you want to make sure you use very strong materials so then that way nothing will fail on you as you're going down the road and the trail. And boom, there we go. Pan hard bar complete. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> Heck yeah. So I've only got the mount tacked right now because I just want to make sure that my clearance, get this out of here so, there we go, okay. I just want to make sure my clearance between my bolt and my arm when this fully compresses up that it's going to clear and then when I know that it clears that's when I'll go ahead and finish welding it out but done and the other side turned out just as good Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> oh, that turned out perfect. Cool. All right, so everything is tacked for the suspension part and now it is time to tackle the cantilever shock system. That is going to be awesome. Thanks for watching everyone. The video ended up getting so long I decided to break it up into two parts because there is so much information with the cantilever system that I really did not want to cut any corners and I want to share all of it with you guys. So I hope you enjoyed part one of the ultimate here drop camper conversion of the suspension and stay tuned for the second part on the cantilever don't forget to subscribe leave a comment let me know what you guys think so far until next time we'll see you guys out on the trail